It's July 2020 and we made it to Formentera. We heard that due to the virus we wouldn't see many boats, but it seems like many people took the opportunity to spend their holidays or weekends on a boat instead of a hotel. The main sandbar of Formentera was absolutely packed with boats and jet skis, so we eventually moved to Cala Saona, which was more quiet yet still quite alive. But this is the story of getting here, and therefore we start in Denia, mainland Spain. She was raised along the salty sea. Nursed on hope and fairy tales I was just as lonesome as could be My notebooks and no one else We are ready to leave for Formentera! Finally! Alex is uh, checking on the anchor Behind me somewhere Because uh, there's another boat over there And we attached ourselves with a landline to get ourselves a little bit out of the swell which worked good during the day and of course didn't work during the night because then the wind is gone so it was kind of a sweaty night but I feel refreshed anyway and now it's time to go to Fomentera when Alex takes off the line I'm gonna start the engine and have breakfast on the sail it's gonna be about 12 hours I guess maybe even longer because it'll be about 50 miles the winds will be kind of on our nose at the end, so we might have to tack into Formentera by the end of the day. So hopefully we leave in about 10 minutes, because it's 8, and then we just arrive before dark. We lifted anchor and left the breakwater anchorage in front of Denia Harbor. Looking left and right, we turned the boat into the wind and hoisted the main. Halfway, as a ship that left the channel and previously headed away from us, changed course and kept course approaching us whilst we were hoisting. We turned away with half a main sail up and let them pass close by as we waved them farewell. So let's have a look at our seamanship situation of the day. Here's the channel. Facing out there is a breakwater on port side and a few buoys on starboard side. The depth outside the channel is about 4 to 6 meters. The course to Formentera is perpendicular to the channel, so boats leaving Denia Harbor generally don't follow the channel until the end, but take a shortcut as soon as they can. And this is also what the Moriat did. Moving around the corner, we saw them heading straight to the island and hoisting the sail while crossing the channel seemed like an okay thing to do, as further it was empty. A few moments later, while hoisting halfway, we noticed the yacht had changed course and now headed straight for us. Following the collision rules, we believed we had to give way, as we were A, on their port side, and B, the vessel that was crossing at the end of the channel. Duh! And of course, we did veer away. But considering that the yacht was leaving the channel prematurely and then came back into it, it seemed easy to believe they wanted to prove a point. Maybe I'm wrong, let's just say we did learn from it. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Maybe one of you is a commercial captain and has a proper eye for this situation. We'd love to hear from you. I told you once, I tell you twice the truth. You are my sin, my effervescent blues. My devil creeps the tears in my room. But I know, I know, I know, you know it's not true. Through all the times you stay into his mouth Through all my ribs that crack and stone loud So how the hell we get so lonely now Because I know, I know, I know, you know it's not now I try to hold on but I don't wanna hold out Just gotta love some 
Wind picked up a bit, we're halfway, uh, 17 knots on 45 degrees, so basically the best that we can do. This morning we motored a bit south, so we can have a better angle today. It seems to be working out so far. We have direct course to the anchorage, no waypoint needed, no tack, weather's great, no swell, good sailing. It's a good day. You can still see mainland Spain, the big mountain we were at. There's quite some traffic today. We've seen a lot of sailboats, a couple of high-speed ferries, but nothing crossing our course directly, so it's been easy. So how is our energy balance? Oh, let's have a look. Since Alex fixed the wind gen, we've been doing quite good. It really helps us, especially on passages. I mean, because you always have quite a lot of wind. It's, it's a bit noisy after a while. But right now, we have a positive energy balance, actually. Between one and three amps we generate with the solar panels and the wind gen, despite the fact that we have the autopilot on, the fridge is quite cold. We have the plotter, all the instruments, charging phones, so that's very nice. However it is, we're around around zero, so we're kind of generating as much energy as we use, so that's pretty good. It's a good balance. It's the last tack. We didn't quite make it upwind. So now we go upwind on a starboard tack. And I forgot how exhausting that is. You doing fine? Doing fine. Yeah, you having fun? Well, I'm happy now we can see uh, all the islands. It feels like we're getting somewhere instead of just open ocean and hours to go. And it feels good that the sun is back. It gives us the feeling there's still some time to get to an island and anchor in yeah. daylight. So once you see the island, you think you're there, but then it takes another five days. And 10 tack. Definitely slower than before, or not slower. Huh. More even. Are you tired? Yeah. Yeah. You? Yeah. The movement is kind of uh, killing me. It's quite slammy for the past couple of hours, and uh, I think we underestimated the length of the sail. So it's getting towards evening and I kind of want to be there now. Yeah. But we're still doing good speed. We're just a bit off course. Which means we have to tack, which will cost us another hour, one and a half hour extra. I just want to be there. We're always going upwind. I don't know why. Always. It's true. Somehow we never manage to take a course that is not close hold. Which is not heeling over for 12 hours. Next time we go downwind, wherever it is that we go. Okay.
it's way too late in Formentera and we're trying to anchor but you don't see We anchored in 8 meters in the dark next to super yachts, catamarans and big sailboats there's a few things I learned today always wear a hat because the sun shines through the bimini <laughs> and gives you a bad headache you should drink more this and yeah I should drink more and when you're cold get a sweater immediately because headache and cold and a long sail is the worst that means that yeah the likelihood that you then get seasick is very very high so I don't feel that good today I'm not grumpy very very happy I'm not grumpy but Jesus if you have a bad headache hey if you have a headache and you have to sail and do maneuvers that's just it's not fun. no but I'm quite happy the anchor gripped right away I think this was the only time since we are out sailing again where we managed to get up before sunrise. Adrenaline fueled by anxiety waiting for the first race to give you a hint of the place you haven't seen but dropped the hook in. We knew that half of Formentera was basically a huge sandbar and there's not much that could go wrong. But it's always a strange feeling of excitement and worry that lingers until you've seen the place in daylight. This is busy. It's lunchtime now. They said the ferry wake is uh, what bothers you in this anchorage. I don't think so. <laughs> the morning was great and then we realized it's Saturday and every single boat in the Balearics decides to get a piece of Formentera. We have honestly never seen this kind of busyness in an anchorage. We didn't even film it. By some magazines this beach is considered the best overall in Europe and we can see why. It is gorgeous. But after a July weekend squeezed in between jet skis, overpowered day-tripper boats and constant restaurant rips zigzagging around the boat, the conditions of the anchorage is not at all dictated by the wind and swell, but by being in or out of high season. We definitely underestimated high season considering we still have this Covid pandemic and we expected a bit more distance and generally less traffic on the water. So after a day we looked for alternatives and motored down south to Cala Saona, which we really enjoyed. More space, yet alive and great scenery. There are these huge boat garages carved in the cliffs with rails to launch the boats. It looks like lorries and mine shafts. The place has very bad reception, but we found a restaurant at the beach so we could upload last week's video. haven't done yet hit subscribe for more sailing in your life and next week more of the Balearics okay bye bye okay bye bye <laughs>